Well, here we are again. This time, we got some dry paint inside, so let's start slinging all this wiring. That's kind of the plan. And uh, see if we can wire up this motor and maybe put a fuel system in it. And see if we can fire this thing up. I think that'd be pretty cool. At least that's, uh, that's from setting the goal. I want to get the wiring in it. Maybe we'll make a seat bracket. Get the seat sitting the way I want in there. Uh, but one thing at a time. Let's start with the uh, let's start with the wiring. It won't be too exciting, but I'm gonna be pretty much sling it in, stick it out the places it needs to go, and then uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it is. We don't have the front on. We'll be able to run it out the back, but I'm going to do the front and the rear harness. I'll just hang them off the side of the motor for right now. And then, uh, I guess, what do you say, Doug? Seat? Seat next so you can test it out. Right? No? <laughs> hey. Alrighty. Well, what do you say? Should we get started? All right. Well, you've probably seen some of it. There's a little bit of struggle getting the wires through, but we got it. Our signal is sitting here. We're gonna deal with that once we do the column. So that's fine. We mounted the fuse box down here. The wiring actually looks semi-decent. This is still a mess, but I haven't stuck it anywhere, and then I'll tuck away anything I'm not using after. We do have our headlight switches in, our key is in. We do have on this side, we did wire it up. So, I tested this, it actually works. So we've wired up the floor blinker. We have the brake switch, which is right there. That's wired. I just gotta put something to hold that sucker on yet. Um, this is all of our wiring for the headlights and all that stuff. So I don't have the fender on, none of that jazz. So we will leave that tucked there for now. The other one I have run down, but I haven't done anything. The big mess is actually for the taillight section, so that's there. We've wired our powers. We've actually wired our box. I just haven't done my tack, and I got to do like my check engine plug and stuff like that. I haven't done any of that stuff. I ran one wire through. It's actually uh, like a power choke. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We have something powered in there for some weird reason if I need it. That will have to get screwed into place. Anyways, then around here we have run my uh, water temp. So I still have to deal with that. Uh, the idea there is I'm going to pull this plug out of here and I'm going to drill and tap it so I can put that big sender in. So I do have a drill and a tap, or a tap for that I should say. And then somewhere we got to put a big hole so we can get the gas pedal plug through the firewall, which is just this big honking thing, which isn't too bad because it does come with this big goofy plug on here, so at least we can plug that. So I'll probably do it where the original pedal went through kind of thing. We'll stab that there. It should be golden. Anyways, I think that was a short night. I don't think I'm going to get too much more done. I think that is where I'm going to call this one until tomorrow. Yeah. Done for tonight. I did a little bit. I did enough. <laughs> we got some stuff in the mail. I have a spare wiring kit for whatever. We got our fuel filter. So this is kind of like got a built-in whoops. This one kind of has like a built-in regulator. It's from a 22S10. The only drawback is 
is it's a five sixteenths feed, so I don't know. It's plenty for what I'm doing, so I'm not too worried about it. We got our one U joint, which is actually the the good one to have because this is the one at the end of the steering column. So we might be able to mock up that steering column and get it like working. Hopefully, we can get that all done. So this is the one end that's the important one. The steering box side I know will just work. So we just need this one to like buzz on and kind of do our thing. And then we got our fuel pump, which is just a Ford, you know, like an 88, 1988 Ford F-150 kind of thing. So we have that. So we pretty much got there, there. I know I'll have fittings and hoses, so that's not a big deal. The only thing that we have a problem with is our fuel tank. They are so dang expensive out here to uh, to buy. I looked on Rock Auto and by the time it gets here, I think this fuel tank's gonna be about 450, almost $500. So I am gonna try to, I filled it up with water. My plan is, I'm not sure where the baffles are. I think I'm gonna cut some openings up in top. I don't think the fuel in there would have burnt, but I wanted to play it safe. So we filled her up. I'm gonna uh, see where we got baffles. I'm gonna go into each section, then we're gonna drain it and see what's in there for garbage. Maybe we can blast it or scrape it or do something to clean it up. And then uh, we'll basically weld it back up and we should be good. Uh, this one looks like it might have been a 49 or a 50 tank, like a, a up to 54 or something, because they did braze uh, the hole in the bottom, which I think I'm going to open back up so I can screw in a fitting to uh, just run to my electric pump. So that's the plan. Again, I'm going to stick something in here. We're going to see... Hey, buddy. We're going to see how far we got to... Uh, how many sections. I don't know how many baffles are in here. Is that a plan? Yeah. It may have been usable, but I don't know if you can see. There is definitely some junk in that tank. I don't know if that thing will focus in there, but it's uh, it's got some scaly rust, so I think it would just make my life really miserable and probably cook my fuel pump. So even with a filter in front of it. So I'm not sure how I'm going to tackle this. I mean, I have muriatic acid, but I don't know if that's going to do it. Or I let this dry and try to sandblast, but I'm not going to get everywhere. I just really want to get the worst of that out. And then, well, hopefully my filter would catch it. But like the one side of the tank, I don't know if you can see here or not, but like it actually looks semi-clean over on the front part of the tank. I don't know why the back is bad. You can see there was a layer of fuel in there at one time. That's what's kind of sludging up on the bottom. I don't know if you can or you can't see. Hold on, let me get a light. How's this? Oh, there we go. If my camera would focus. Like it's not terrible, but it's definitely not perfect either. Anyways, I can just get my hand in there. It seems silly to cut it open, but I'm trying to save this. So I should be able to get my hand in. I'm gonna go with a brush scrub everything down, see if I can get that with a wire brush, and then uh, we'll see how bad it is after. I don't know. I don't think a pressure wash is going to get that off. Maybe a hot wash. It's just got enough scale on it that it's kind of cratty. Kind of crappy, but I don't know. 
Let's spend a half hour at it and see what happens here. Maybe we can save it. I really hope I can save it. So we, I had some problems with that hot wash. Kind of got it figured out working. It's a little dark. I don't know how well this recording went, but I'm pretty happy with our outcome here. This thing cleaned up pretty nice inside. This thing would focus. You could probably see. It's still a little bit of gunk, but it's not too bad. I'm uh, pretty happy with it. So anyways, now what I got to do is, I got a couple broken bolts. We're going to fix those. Um, the original ascending unit had the pickup coming off the top. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come through the bottom. And I'm going to drill. I'm going to put a weld a plate on with um, like a, a nozzle that we can go from there to a filter, which from the filter is going to go to our pump pump to that other filter. I just have to put a pre-filter just in case there's still some junk in here. So, so all I'm going to do is just the old style clear filter on the bottom. From here, we're going to feed our pump. Hopefully that thing can feed through all of this. I hope so. If not, I can always use like LS filters, but we'll try it. If this pump by chance doesn't like that and burns up, then we'll, we'll, we'll come up with a different plan. They were not very expensive. It was like $35 or something like that. 35, 35, 38, I don't know. Somewhere that range. Anywho, again, gonna weld the plate, tap it, put a fitting on. From there, I don't know, I'll do it on the bottom or I'll do it on the side of the tank, back of the tank. I'm gonna do, I'll probably do it near the top, do the return so it can feed back into the tank from the filter. So how's this all gonna work? We're gonna have our fuel tank, a fuel filter, fuel pump, gonna go to this thing, this thing gonna go to the motor. This is gonna go back to the tank, to somewhere. So I gotta let this dry, uh, or I'm gonna let the inside dry out. Then my plan is to fold these buggers back up, weld them up. Uh, I'm gonna heat, pull those two screws out that are bad. And then we're gonna make those plates for everything. And then I guess, or those adapter dealios. And then I think we're good to go to smash it back in here. So we have this big hole right here. So I'm thinking that's where I'm gonna kind of on the tank, I'm gonna make the, the outsie for the pump there. And then where the original line was here, that's where I'll run the return and I'll kind of come up somewhere on the tank and we'll kind of feed it back in that way. I do have this. I found this one in the shed, so we can kind of have the original style auto shifter when I get that far. We still have to look at that. Um, I had some of these buttons to which they're just like a door jam switch. So I'm going to put these in, in here behind these panels. But I'm going to run them to run the interior light, just so at least when we open and close the door, we got a nice interior light in there. We'll do that on the ground side. The one side I wired up to the switch, 
So I'm not sure if it gets power all the time. If not, I do have a courtesy light here. So we could have under the dash lights and we could have that working all at the same time. There's two different fused wires for the system. One for the dome light and then one for like courtesy lights. From there, we'll run the grounds off all the lights to both door switches. And that way, anytime you open a door, we'll have lights here, light up there. So we can actually see where we're going to fumble onto when we try to get in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right anyways i'll let that dry and then we're going to attack that again
Okay, well that wasn't too bad. Not the greatest, but it's fine. <laughs> we welded up our two holes. We drilled two holes. You've seen me weld on um, a sleeve on there. I did that because I didn't want to just to hear like a waterfall behind my seat all the time. So we dropped it down to the bottom of the tank. So when it does the return, it should just be into the fuel always. So it should be fairly quiet, I'm hoping. Um, so then we welded these up. The welds should be good. I didn't bother testing. I just stuck some seal all. This is what we have. I don't know. I get it's uh, I'm not sure where you get it. We get it at our Canadian Tire. Um, it gets for sealing gas tanks, oil, everything. The cool stuff part about this stuff is if you have if this was leaking gas, you didn't have to drain it. You can actually patch with this. So I just did preventative. I just kind of stuck it over all the welds just lather it a little bit and uh, that should be golden i don't have my filler yet or my sending unit i might just cut up the old one just so i can close the top and then uh, when the new one comes i can stick it in we can hook it up all that stuff on the bottom we welded in our fitting there gooped it on so uh we just gotta do a a piece of rubber or something down here to plug that hole cover this and then we gotta do some uh, rubber straps I know they had like a rubber inner tube across the whole thing it's only touching in these couple point places so I'm just gonna cut some mud flap or something we're gonna stick it underneath here and here and I'm gonna find a piece of foam of something that I can kind of cover this hole and stick this filler through and then we can bolt the tank in that is the plan for now and then I guess we can start figuring out how we're going to plumb all this stuff. We are doing the fuel system and we're doing push connects. I have talked about this a lot before, but I realize there's probably a lot of people here who have never seen any of this. Anyways, I have this random chunk of line that, uh, I don't know, came off something. It's got the one five sixteenths end that I need and this end is still good. We can reuse these if you heat up the end. The guy reused the push connects. They're readily available, but if a feather can reuse them, why not? I don't really want to put a razor blade into it because I find it kind of messes them up. I find just heating it and giving it a tug is enough. This one's got a bit of a weird double something going on here anyways that'll pull out that'll get you that so when i put these together i try to make sure i have enough meat to push down and what i have is this random wooden block that i've drilled uh some holes in and cut it in half come on let's get this off This one because the piece I needed a little longer so I'm hoping this will work otherwise I'll have to make a fresh line 
I've had no luck heating and trying to straighten these lines out though. So if that's something you're going to try to do, I cannot say that that's going to work. So this is a little close and that bend might screw us over. A little dab of oil or something. I'm just using something to wet the end up and kind of start it. Now you could push it. They make a tool for this, but I don't know. I don't have it. Mental note, make sure you take your uh, your fitting out before you're beating on it because there's a good chance you'll, you'll kind of wreck it. Anyways, that holds it in place. When it's all said and done, we have a good fitting that should just work. So I can put this end in there. And now we have from my fuel pump to my filter. Anyways, I'm gonna make two more of these. I'm gonna do one return into the truck and then I'll do a small steel line that we can do into that fitting we made. And then I gotta do another line up to the engine. So we'll make those quick and then, and then I'll uh, show you what I did under the truck. Shall we bring you underneath, see what I've done? Oh. All right, so we got our, I have to still fasten that. We got our line going to our filter, which then runs up to our pump over here. Um, bottom side, our fuel pump is there, which we're gonna get a clean, some clean fuel from there. Oh, I just realized I put the filter on backwards. Okay, I'll switch that around. <laughs> and then we come over and that's gonna go into our return inside the cab. So, now. I have made this, uh, this little fitting. So what it is, it'll go a push connect to the other line. Now, I'll kind of show that, how that works inside the cab here so inside here oh, boo. where'd my line go it's like hiding down there now dang it hold on let me pick that up <laughs> all right so anyways we got our little push connect here and i put that little fitting in there which then rubber hoses here which is now our return line. So that makes our fuel system done. We got to do a couple ties to make sure everything is in order underneath the hood. Um, what do you do now? Just got to clean up that battery tray. We're going to get it on here. Do the fuel, uh, the gas pedal thing. Well, I just want to run it in there. I don't think I need it to fire it up. Uh, we'll have to loop these lines for now, so they don't make a humongo mess. Uh, yeah, a few things. We're very close though. Very, very close. Alrighty, well, first things first, I'm going to change that fuel filter before I forget that.
Okay, so, well, there's a few things that have happened since. I kind of just stuck this on for the mass air dealio. Uh, what do we do? We just loop the tranny lines. I unlocked the computer. They had turned the rear O2s to everything, but they didn't turn the vats off. So it's a good thing I took a look at that. That is good. We did punch a hole. Well, this plug, not 100%. But anyways, we got the hole. Our gas pedal is in there. Module's right there for now. The one battery I threw in there was no good. But all I have is top posts. But I did find a set of these weird cable things. So those are there. That's good. Uh, I had just run the town, got some fuel. So I'll have to put some fuel in here yet. But what? that happens. And... I can hear my gas pedal working, so that's good. So anyways, let's put some fuel in there and see if this sucker fires. That would be ideal. I think that was my goal for this round. I probably had higher goals, but for now, this actually took a lot of time. <laughs> All right, let's smash some fuel in here. Have to make sure we have no leaks anywhere. I have confidence I got it right. <laughs> All right. Well, now let's listen to my pump. Oh, that just seems overly loud. Is there a chance I have that pump on backwards? I'm starting to feel that. Oh, maybe not. I really can't tell. It doesn't sound like it's laboring. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the old pokeroo at the rail here. Just dust. Hmm. All right. I think we got something. I just think that pump is like super hard to prime, which you wouldn't think that if it's Now we have nothing. <laughs> oh. All right. I am going to troubleshoot for a while and we'll <laughs> be right back. We got fuel pump. I believe we have pressure, but when I crank, I have nothing. Oh yeah, we got fuel pressure. So that's fine. So I don't know. I'm gonna go through this and check stuff over here. We're gonna try that. I bypassed the factory relay, so hopefully that works. All right. Whatever it says. Dino, that's loud. <laughs> hey, there you go. All right, I'll bring you guys in and show you what I did in here. 
I had one fail, but yeah. Man, is that thing loud. Oh, key Dyna. <laughs> All right, folks. I said I was going to bring you back to this wiring and show it to you. Again, this is like 03 and up, or is it 04 and up? I don't remember because we're with the electric gas pedal. So, anywho, we're using the stock fuse box, and everything except for one thing I said pretty much seems to work. So ignore this yellow wire that I said is for the fuel pump because I can't get that to work for the life of me. So whatever, that's done. Anywho, if you look at the fuse box this way, there'll be one plug up here. So you need to loop this one around to the stud on the front. There's two wires here because I'm running all the electrics in my truck, like uh, everything inside on there as well. Anywho, back at this. So, if we look at this, the grid here, this one's gotta go to battery. If you come back here, you can kinda do the countings. But we did this pink and this pink together, which we ran to the coil wire from my truck. We touched nothing in here. And then on this one plug, this is for uh, right here, is what runs the fuel pump. After that's said and done, we can kind of moosh stuff into here. And at the very least, that's all you got to do. And it's going to run. <laughs> all right. In editing, I need to come back and clarify a few things in here. I realized I, uh, I'm steering you wrong a bit. I did note this. This I'm saying is fuel pump. It's actually for the starter relay. Regardless, that's not needed, or I'm not using it anyways. I can't figure out how to make it work. Uh, but in here, when I said I didn't touch anything, I actually did cut the purple wire, which is for the starter. So I snipped and put that to my crank on my key. That's the only wire that I touched out of this bundle in the middle here. And then this one's like my fuel pump. Uh, I hope that makes it clear as mud for people. For this particular harness anyways. Anyways, back to the video. <laughs> <laughs> and very loudly if you have it with open headers. You still need to get somebody to unlock your computer. You got to turn those vats or the security off. But on that note, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm pretty happy it runs. We'll have to go through everything. I still got to do the torque converter. I haven't done that. So it's kind of a little bit noisy. But holy, that thing loud. Not sure why this thing's like so hard cranking. I have to look into that. I wonder if it's not getting a proper prime. Could be because of the way my pump is. I put a filter in front of it. I'm not sure. Should just start in my eyes. Should you should hear the pump do that and it should just start. All right, <laughs> man, is it loud though? Something seems off down there. Oh, Lee, you have no idea how loud that is. People who like. Open headers, man. Dying, that's loud. <laughs> uh, oh, well. All right. Well, I think I succeeded for what I wanted to do in this round. I knew. Next round, what are we going to do? I guess, well, eventually I'm going to have to tackle this front sheet metal, but I'm still not feeling it. I kind of wanted my goal to drive this thing yet, like to move it. Well, yeah, because we don't have any rad stuff. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll continue plugging with the drivetrain a little bit. And uh, we'll plug with the drivetrain. We'll start with the 
steering maybe next round and getting a seat in there properly. I do have that Silverado seat over there, uh, but we're going to have to make some brackets for it. So I do like where the other seat sits, but I don't like how it was mounted. And I think this seat's just going to look cleaner in the seat truck when it's said and done. I do like the weirdness of this seat, but, and it sat perfect. So whatever I make is going to have to sit about this high because it felt the most comfortable. Uh, what did the nail in the coffin, why I'm not using it is when I took it out, the bracketry, the seat brackets just kind of did that. So <laughs> I don't even know what it's made out of old table legs and stuff. I don't know. I can't imagine that one's much better. Oh no, there we go, hey, see? So, yeah, I think that'll be the plan next round. Well folks, I think that's where we're gonna leave this one. We got a successful startup. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Eventually, pretty soon, it should be moving under its own power. That's the plan. <laughs> Anyways. I want to thank you folks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later. I forgot the back of the intake open. <laughs>